Ladies and gentlemen, follow me as I'm going to give you the history of Solomon Plaiki as well as the Dead Sea to Halishe. Come, follow me. This route is exciting because it tells our children about the history of Halishewe, especially the icon, Mr. Tekisho Solomon Blaiki. What the excellent achievement this man has made. It's a hero. <laughs> Because he is the one that pulled us from apartheid. It's my president. <laughs> <laughs> Still today. We are worshipping those people who fought for us in the past years that we had. This wonderful South Africa. These people were staying in Feld. Now they are gathering because of the other coups and the quays. Now they are one nation because of our president who, who introduced the Rainbow Nation. There's a reason why we are proudly South Africans, black and white and Indian. Remember that Solomon Plaiki was born in 1876 and he passed away in 1932. And this beautiful statue, he was honored in 2010, 100 years after he has made such a big contribution in South African history. How can it take them 100 years to recognize this man's work? I never knew. Hi, but man. I know today. I know. He is a legend. I know. But did you also know that this guy, he translated William Shakespeare's book into Sichuana? Did you know that? No. That means he's a great hero. He's a great legend. Wow. Wow. Shakespeare, Shakespeare, Romeo, yes, yes. yes. And he was the first general secretary of the African Native Congress. Wow. Yes, now called the ANC. Wow. wow. That's he's a great man. Yeah, he's a very, very great, great man living here in Kimberley, right here. Amanda. Yes. We are, we are going, going to, to Halishiwe. It's the appetite era. Mm -hmm. 
many uh, people were killed. And as you can see, houses were burning, people were arrested, others were wounded, and others were killed during the 1952 uprising. As you can see, as the fight was happening, the bullet wounds were just wounding everybody. And then even here, what the artist is trying to depict here, like this baby was on the back of this woman, they shot the baby, and then it went on the mother's back. And that is, that was a very, very horrible day. That must never be repeated again. And I have someone who was really there, who was participating in the 1952 uprising, when white people were killing black people and black people were fighting. It was just another mix-up situation. But I'm sitting here with Mr. Matthews, who was participating in the 1952 uprisings. People were unhappy about certain things. Beer halls, alcohol consumption to lull the consciences of the people. Potato boycotts, where the bodies of black people were used as manure on potato farms. People were unhappy with the quality of education, inferior education, which was termed Bantu education, education for slavery. Dr. Favavurt said the black man should never see or taste of the glories of South Africa. White privilege. Whites were seen as semi-gods. Blacks as nothing. Mm. These were the basic things that caused people to come out in huge numbers and violently. Uh, I understand also they burned their passes, uh, uh, but I want to know, were you physically involved and how old were you during uh, the time of the uprisings? I was a little boy of nine to ten years. Yes, I saw everything because we children are very curious. I came after my mother and I saw the leadership of the African National Congress burning their passes, making a big fire and inviting the public to do the same. Mm. There was a bonfire of buses burning in the street. I saw this precinct glowing in fire. Trees were burning. Mm. The public had reacted. Where they got the petrol from, we don't know, but there was fire. This was a premeditated action. And this whole place, it was burned into smotherings. I was holding on my mother. But when the police came shooting, we all scattered and ran home. Thank you. Violence is man's inhumanity to man. Violence is not a solution to a problem. Mm. It magnifies, makes great the problem. Mm. What we need is talking to each other, communication.
Mr. Matthews, if you, if you may tell me, why were the beer halls built by that time, that era of 1952? Yes, the beer hall. The government and municipalities of the, the apartheid era built beer hall in order to lull the people, make them sleep. They must drink themselves to death and forget about the political issue. Alcohol is still a problem amongst the African people. We drink not for the sake of enjoyment, but to, as a root of escapism. I knew Robert Sobukwe. He was a great African philosopher. He was a lecturer of African languages at the University of the Witwatersrand. A big hero of South Africa, Robert Sobukwe, is paining me because when you realize the contribution that this man has made, for his offers not to be looked after. This is uh, Pakami Lema Bija's house in Miti Street. This is where they took him, and then they took him to the Transvaal Road police station on the sixth floor. As you can see, these windows, they opened that window and threw him on the floor. Because he was wearing glasses. The glasses symbolizes because they are the one that have seen everything that has happened. The glasses saw everything. Now the police were claiming that Pakamile has committed suicide. Till this today, nobody was arrested in the case of Pakamile Mapija. What started the fight was the fact that the community were feeling that it is not fair that the buses' prices must go up when the money that they are earning is very less. It was the bus boycott, and as you can see, these are the buses. This is the community. And they said he was inciting the community to fight against the buses. And when that yellow van appears, you must know you must run. It was a police car. When it appears, you must just know you must run for your life, otherwise, you're going to be arrested, or you're going to be beaten up, or you're going to be killed. Built after 1994, when we all tasted the fruits of freedom, it is when young people came together as artists and identified My Buye Art Center. It used to be a beer hall where the apartheid government were encouraging black people to drink alcohol. So after 1994, the government of the day decided that, let us do something about the centers that, that are bringing bad memories to our people, that are encouraging our people to use alcohol. That is when the, my, the idea of the Maibuye Art Center came up. It actually came out from artists in the community saying that they needed an art center. This art center is called Maibuye Art Center. Young people get engaged into new dimensions, not looking into color, not looking into race, but also uh, um, handing over to the possibilities of life and the opportunities that are there.